Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast. Uh, we're coming at you on uh, February 10th, 2021. Now we are uh, several weeks into the Biden administration and uh, still a lot of crazy stuff to talk about there. But uh, uh, before we get into any of that, let's introduce you to our panel. Up in our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word, Brathwaite, last word in liberty, retired engineer in the state of California. And up in our right-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Evert, a pilot in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, uh, Biden administration's going on, and uh, we have still all these problems with uh, the schools, and we've been... You know, we've been promised that, you know, that all these problems were going to be fixed once we got Biden in place. But, uh, you know, there's still a lot of turmoil, but there's been a little bit of motion in this last week. Uh, we had an issue with uh, uh, Lori Lightfoot in Chicago making a big move against the teachers union. And I guess they're supposed to get K through eight uh, in live classes again in this next week. Now, that said, We've had live classes going on in some red states, but as far as the blue states are concerned, and like us here in California, you know, kids are just out of luck as, you know, but uh, finally the, the brave teachers are, are uh, you know, finally finally uh, being brought back to the classroom and, you know, we'll, uh, you know, see if we can eliminate some of that uh, risk on the kids' futures going forward. So uh, any guys have any thoughts on state of our lockdowns with schools and, uh, you know, where we are going forward? It's a, you know it's, it's quite funny you know these these people they always like to lecture us about we must believe in science you know when they're talking about the environmental nonsense the climate change nonsense we have to believe in science now we have scientific proof that kids do not spread this thing they do not spread the COVID they are not infected by it at any significant rate but yet the teachers they don't want to go back to the classrooms but you know what they want their paycheck. They have to have that. They want their paycheck. There is no evidence that support them not being in the classroom. But still they insist that, oh, we're still at risk. We are in danger. So here we are. Our kids who need in-person instruction have been suffering through this pandemic because the government decided that this is essential and that is not essential. And this is what we should do. Even though the science, which they always claim they believe in, tells us that the class classrooms are not the places of infections, not with little kids. Still, they insist we have to stay home to protect ourselves. Now they came up with a new demand, even though there's some movement now in Chicago, but they come up with a new demand now. Oh, we have to be vaccinated first before we can go back to the classroom. When there is no science, to say that they are in any more danger by whether vaccinated or not vaccinated, maybe in the general public, but not in the classrooms. Well, Leon, still yeah. insisting. Well, to, to break in on that just for a second, uh, so the CDC, uh, uh, one of the people at the, I guess, near the top of that organization came out and said about a week or so ago that uh, all teachers being vaccinated was not uh, necessary to get in class uh, teaching going on again. That was not a, right. a showstopper. And then the Biden administration came out not too long after that, uh, speaking through uh, Jen Psaki, uh, saying that, uh, well, uh, she's speaking for herself, not the organization, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as the CDC person. So, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's uh, the bravery is astounding, you know, <laughs> both the bright Biden administration and the teachers unions as they watch kids' futures just collapse. That's right. Like, well, like, like, so. like, go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. Well, <clears throat> if if they weren't getting paid to stay home doing nothing or doing you know minimal stuff online to uh, you know supposedly uh, teach the kids uh, being not anything near what they'd normally be doing work-wise, which I'm just making some assumptions here, I have to admit, um, then I can I can understand why they don't want to go back to work, because uh, why should they? They could stay home and make the same amount of money, and 
And All right. I don't know that in the in the private industry in private industry uh, is that possible? Can you can you just stay home, not do any work at all, don't work from home, quote unquote, uh, and just uh, and still keep drawing the same paycheck and not without drawn into your uh, you know your sick leave or your vacation time and just uh, you know be fat, dumb, and happy. I don't know. Can you can you do that? <laughs> Oh, did I say fat? Oh, is that a, against the protocol? Is that the am I unwoke because you, I said the F? Did I say yeah. the F word? Yes, you did. <laughs> they will suspend you from school if you show yeah. up. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, social media might cut in just now and tell you you said a bad word, Tim. Very bad. I did. I did. <laughs> so, um, it doesn't surprise me that they don't want to go back to work. Number one, um, number two, yeah, I mean, I, that's Leon's correct. Uh, you know, all the the so-called science that I've heard of and and read myself indicates that uh, Leon said it. He said it all. So uh, I don't know. That's you know next, <laughs> unless we have more to say about it. No, but you know, but no, this. This thing really speaks to a larger problem if we have in our society, you know, it really does, okay? And we should not minimize it. It's the power of government and the bureaucracy of the government. It, 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 it is really destroying our lives. And added to that now, on top of that, is the unions. The unions are making all sorts of demands. I mean, we spoke about this previously on our show. I don't know if you remember one time we were talking about something that was going on in, with the LA, um, LA Unified School District. They were talking about before they could go back to school, they have to defund the police, they have to do, they, they wanted universal health care, and all sorts of these ridiculous demands that have nothing to do with educating our children. And this is what is happening here. Government and the unions are combining to destroy our liberties, our civil liberties. And that's what's going on here. Parents have no choice now. You have to send your kid to that nasty school down the street. Otherwise, you can't send them any place else. And if you don't send them to the nasty school down the street, you know what? Somebody from the government will come and prosecute you for not for, for, for endangering your child or, or whatever it is, for child abuse, I guess. And, and, and this is what's going on. This well, yeah, is what's going on. <laughs> our lives are being destroyed right before our very eyes because government are making decisions for us that we should be making for ourselves. Yeah. Well, we got to be careful here. We really got to be careful here. This well, pandemic have exposed so many things, you know, about our civil liberties. And we better learn these lessons. Otherwise, they will keep on going until we can't even recognize the country in which we're living. Yeah. Well, you can't uh, even help but uh, notice when you say, uh, worried about parents abusing the children. Look what the government just did. I mean, the government literally just stole a year of children's education. I mean, literally just wiped it out. Point. Um, now, you know, it, as far as things go, I mean, the value of government education, you kind of have to wonder in the first place. But, uh, you know, because I mean, it hasn't exactly had stellar results. But the point is, they tell us this is important. And they tell us that we will be thrown in jail if we don't send our kids to school. And then yet they, you know, just, uh, you know, throw the kids out of school. And exactly, uh, you know, it's the redistribution is just crazy that's happening to kids right now, taking away from them uh, to give to other uh, to satisfy risk to other people. It's just, you know, astounding. But, you know, you know? and the other issue with the teachers union, too. Um, you know, it, it's one thing, you know, for, you know, I think most libertarians are probably fine with the idea of a union in the sense of, of just people voluntarily getting to organize uh, to, to speak as a group. Well, we probably don't always think it's a very wise thing to do, but we certainly think, you know, people should have that freedom of association. But with the government, it's different because in the case of government, uh, all the incentives are, are messed up. You know, I mean, you, you have uh, the teachers union. Uh, that donates to the politicians that they're negotiating against uh, who are supposed to be representing the taxpayers. So yes. you have these two concentrated interests. Neither of them really represents the taxpayer. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's the worst of all situations. And, you know, I think what we're seeing is right now, you know, all of these teachers who literally just are are putting the interest of the customer, the kids, at last. So, 
I don't know. There's, yeah. you know, you know, I don't, people, freedom of association and freedom of assembly, I don't have a problem with that. In particular with the unions, if the unions want to get, if people want to get together and form unions, I don't have a problem. My problem begin when the government start making special dispensation for these unions and forcing people to do things that they wouldn't otherwise do. Like I was forced to pay a union money for 20 and a half years until the Janice decision. That is where my problem begin. Because these unions, you know, and I think we spoke about this before, and, and I think uh, Tim, Tim in particular raised this point. Back in the 1940s, okay, Franklin Delano Roosevelt wrote, um, raised the issue of public employees having unions. Because what really happens is the unions and the government and representatives of the government get together and the only thing that they're trying to determine is how much you're going to screw the taxpayers. Then there's nobody there protecting the taxpayer when they're negotiating. They're just thinking about how much we could screw the taxpayers to satisfy this permanent bureaucracy that is now living in our lives right now. In our, in our very lives, sometimes even in our homes, they're living right now. That's what they're doing now, destroying our civil liberties. Yeah, uh, uh, and a very important uh, member of the negotiations is absent in those negotiations. The person right. that's paying for it all. Paying all for, exactly, it. exactly, very good point. Very good point. Yes. They're not there, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, in private uh, in private union uh, company negotiations, you have a you know someone representing the company or the the shareholders, uh, the owners of the company essentially, and somebody representing the labor. Okay, duke it out, you know, talk it out, see what you guys come up with. Sure. But in in a public employees, <laughs> it's it's ludicrous. In a public employees unions got got uh, two people, both of them living off the dole of the taxpayer, both of them. And each yeah. one of them are sitting there talking about how to screw the taxpayer out of more money. Amazing. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. Anyway, but I love uh, the John, the, the Mark Twain quote about uh, God first made stupid people, but that was just for practice. Then he made school boards. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> So this has been going on for a long time. I mean, we're going to get more into the school board stuff, but uh, yeah, this is this has been going on for a very long time. Obviously, if Mark Twain wrote about it back in the day, so. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's there's there, there's a video I wanted to share too, and this kind of highlights the absurdity of some of this teachers union stuff. Um, and, and like I said, recently uh, Lori Lightfoot made some progress with the Chicago teachers. However. Uh, before that happened, just a few days before that happened, the Chicago teachers, they actually spent, I guess, some of their resources and some of these teachers who really aren't teaching, uh, dance <laughs> teachers who are, you know, I, I'm not sure what they're doing while <laughs> they're off here, you know, in this uh, COVID vacation. But uh, they they, uh, they put together a video essentially saying, trying to express their safety concerns through dance. And so let me let me share that with you, just a, at least a little bit of it. So you can get the sense of uh, what we're talking about here. <laughs> I, I actually like some of the dancing in this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the, the sad thing is it's 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 uh, being essentially paid for or subsidized by taxpayers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I wonder if they got extra pay. For this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> safety is essential of course yeah uh -huh. yeah maybe yeah. you know maybe if they were, maybe they should quit being teachers and just go into full-time dance yeah, yeah. maybe so maybe so yeah. well i i kind of doubt that uh you know they would fare too well on the private market <laughs> at least from what i'm seeing i don't know yeah you never know you never I don't know. <laughs> Look at the dancers at the Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that was a kind of a crazy halftime. All of them were wearing masks. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, I uh, let me uh, let me uh, stop sharing here and uh, 
It's just the idea that, you know, I mean, this is something that, you know, your kids literally are suffering. They're, they're I mean, you know, the suicide rates are up. I, I think the uh, American uh, Pediatrics uh, 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 was, uh, uh, they, they put out a paper that said, I think that suicide mm -hmm. rates and ideation and all that stuff, it's up like 1.5. I mean, it's, it's, it's up by a factor of 1.5, so 50%. Yes. You yes. know, an increase, yes. and I mean, that's that's a that's a big cost, you know. And I mean, the idea that you know well, that, that they don't matter because we're just talking about the teachers here, you know. It's it's uh, about their, uh, I don't know. And that is something well, that, where, uh, but I, I haven't heard of a of a kids union or like you know a student a, a, a elementary students union that well, represents the elementary students. I haven't heard yes. about that yet. I think maybe, the teachers union will. I think they'll tell you that they're looking out for the kids. <laughs> they're always looking out, always looking out for the kids. Yeah. You know, in that video I just showed it, um, Jason, they all they're talking about keeping us safe, safety, and all these sort of things. I wonder what it is exactly they're asking us to be they're asking to be protected from. It cannot be the COVID because we have scientific data that prove that they are not at risk going in the classroom. So what it is they're asking to be protected from? What? Now, the, the, well, in, in one of the articles, one of the teachers was saying, you know, we we can't control where the, the kids go when they're out of school. Uh, they could go anywhere. And what the assumption was, was that they would pick up COVID from, you know, some, uh, I bet they wish they could control where the kids went. I bet they wish they could just, yeah. you know, tell, tell every kid in their classroom, okay, I want you to stay home. Don't go anywhere and don't associate with anyone, but but they can't. So the, and they know that, and so the the assumption is that they're going to bring bring the COVID in and pass it along to the teacher, right? You right. know, even though, like Leon said, they don't uh, they don't get it to where they can uh, pass it on. So I mean, you know, they they don't even get it most of the time, let alone get it and then be so sick. Uh, yet still able to go to school without a temperature and they, they spread it, you know, they're not even doing that. So anyway, um, it's crazy. And, and, and the thing is that the, the Biden administration, which is supposed, you know, since our Democrat is in the white house, they're supposed to bring, um, milk and honey to, to America. They're supporting the nonsense. You like, like you just said, as soon as the, the, the head of the CDC came out and said that, you know, there's nothing wrong with teachers returning to the classroom. They disown that statement. No, 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 no. He was just speaking for himself. Oh, you know, we 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 um we still uh, want to dance safely, but he was speaking for himself. What the hell, or she, or whoever it was? What the hell are you talking about? The science supports the statement. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, it turns out that this uh, COVID stuff isn't the only crazy stuff going on in our education system right now. In San Francisco, there's also, uh, you know, some news on education and. Uh, one of the crazy things is the uh, San Francisco uh, Board of Education Commissioner uh, has come out saying that um, merit and, you know, uh, merit-based rewards are racist. So, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what we can do. I, I'm not sure exactly how they want to meter how they're teaching the kids or anything, if they just want to tell the kids they're succeeding without demonstration of any of it or not. I don't know, but apparently merit is racist. So I don't know where you go with that. You guys have any you know, ideas? You know, I, I think the basketball players that are the, the absolute best, the ones that bring the crowd in and razzle dazzle the crowds uh, uh, playing, playing basketball, the ones that have the highest merit, uh, should be paid appropriate uh, to exactly the same. They should all make the same amount of money. Uh, because negotiating on behalf of one really good player uh, is is meritocracy, and that is inherently racist. And those basketball players who are uh, many of whom are black should be especially um, sensitive to 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 this whole this whole whiteness of making more money than the next guy on your team. I mean, we're a team for crying out loud. And, uh, you know, if, if the, if, well, if, if the forward makes more baskets than the guard, you, you should make, pay them all the same. Right. And, well, not only that, I, I have yet to hear the players union in basketball, uh, demanding that 
Asians and Mexicans and whites all be proportionally represented out represented there. Represented <laughs> in the NBA. Exactly. Exactly. Now that you mention it. Now yeah. that you, mention this, it. You, you see, this, this is the whole problem. They always want to tell us what meritocracy we should accept and what we should not accept. In the NBA, it's okay. All right? NFL, it's okay. But educating our children, which is probably the most important thing that we can do in terms of raising our children, both in the home and in society in general, that most important thing, meritocracy is a horrible, evil thing that you white guys are pushing up upon us. Whiteness is so evil that even our children educate, being educated in the, in the, in the so-called public schools, even they are experiencing this horror of white privilege being op op just oppressing their, their development. This is the madness that's going on in our society. This thing that we are calling public education is nothing but a public disgrace. And it have people like this. The problem is the people like this woman, I think her name is Alison, Alison something. God, I, I, yes. This piece of human waste, these are the people that is controlling the education of our children. And this is a horrible, horrible problem. When you have people thinking like this, instead of educating our children, instead of looking at the shortcomings of what they're teaching our children in the schools, no, we can't look at that. We could only look at the whiteness that is causing the problem. Well, God help of, us. Speaking of whiteness causing the problem, and and also the issue of merit, uh, I, I was, uh, you know, one, one of the issues uh, just to stay on merit just for a second is perhaps maybe the reason they don't want us to look at merit is because then we'd start judging the teachers and exactly. <laughs> by exactly. what they're well, doing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we can't have that in, in competition yes. in schools. But, but uh, you know, getting on to that issue of whiteness, another issue in San Francisco that's just absolutely just kind of head spinning. Um, they've decided that apparently, um, you know, that there's the, the, the current names of a lot of the schools are just not woke enough. And apparently... Um, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, those just aren't suitable names anymore for their school. So they're literally removing those names from some of their schools. There's a there's about a list of 40 schools or something like that where they're removing names, including Dianne Feinstein's name, too. They're going to remove that uh, for some <laughs> minor offense that she gave 30 or 40 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's just like they come to eat their own at some point. I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you guys have any hey, thoughts? You know, you know the audience? The only, there's only there's only one word to describe all of this insanity seriously this has to be insane so because i want to know okay you want to remove all these names from all these schools i think there were like 44 names or something like that they were going to remove in including one of the roosevelt and all that kind of stuff and things like that okay i want to remove those these names because oh they were slave owners they were they, they, they did something wrong, they said the wrong thing, blah, 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 all those other things. You know, that's a really, truly amazing. I really wonder, who are the angels they're going to put in their place? Who are the angels that we have in our society or a past or present that they could put up and say, aha, uh -huh, this is that perfect utopian person that we can now look and say, this is a nice, wonderful thing to do. What is wrong with these insane people? Maybe that's the answer is right there. It's insanity. That's God what got, it is. It's insanity. God got really good at making stupid people. Oh, Enough yes. Practice. Oh, yes. Well, the school system yeah. helped out a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure? yeah, that's true. That's true. I forgot about that. Well, I'm sure, Leon, I'm sure that whoever they choose will be a black angel, not a white <laughs> angel. No, it, it, it might be a female, female lesbian or something too. You know, well, something. that could be. That could One be, thing yeah. is sure, and that's it. Whoever it is in the in the future, those people will get eaten up too, just as Diane Feinstein. <laughs> oh, did. by somebody <laughs> in some future day. Yeah, yeah. For sure. But it is now time for our knucklehead noise patrol, and that is the point oh. in our show where we try and. Uh, end it with talking about something crazy somebody said, and of course we've just been through a lot of crazy stuff, so maybe this whole show has been a knucklehead noise patrol. But uh, uh, in this case, it yeah. is once again the Biden administration and Jen Psaki, and you know, it's just uh, kind of babbling stuff coming out of that White House constantly. So one of the uh, uh, Biden's first executive orders was to kill the Keystone Pipeline. 
And uh, because of that, uh, it, you know, the union and uh, a lot of other people were saying, hey, this is going to kill a lot of jobs. The estimates are around 11,000. The union was saying right away it's going to kill like a thousand jobs from their union. So it's, you know, uh, it's clearly an issue. So uh, there was a Fox reporter there who yeah, I guess uh, the, before the uh, um, Biden administration said, don't worry, we'll replace these with green jobs. So this isn't a concern. So so this reporter then said, uh, uh, a reporter by the name of Peter Ducey, he said, uh, where is it uh, that they can go for their green jobs? Uh, that is something the administration has promised and there is now a gap. So I'm just curious uh, when that will happen, uh, when those people can count on that. So he's looking out for all those guys who lost their jobs. And so uh, uh, Jen Psaki, her uh, response was, well, I'd certainly welcome you to present your data of all the thousands and thousands of people who won't be getting a green job. Maybe next time you're here, you can present that. <laughs> so, it was not an idea of saying, oh, hey, yeah. where are the green jobs? Like, why don't you prove to me that there's been some people who've lost their jobs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who, who's not getting a green job? Yeah, yeah. Still a rabbit. She <laughs> uh, was. Um, uh, I mean, I, I don't know where to begin. I mean, so half of me wants to say you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So those jobs that they got were basically government jobs, um, building the pipeline, uh, uh, okayed by by government action, and and so on. So in a in a sense, you know, they oh okay now now new government in town. So there goes that job. Um, but but I really don't want to say that because you know in some cases that's what seems to be required in this day and age to um, to get certain things done of that nature. Um, <clears throat> although I, I don't know, I'm, I don't know that much about the oil industry to know why uh, oil companies can't build a pipeline and why they're not free to. But I guess it's because of the you know the rights to go through property. Environmental so so envir forth. environmental yeah. regulations. Yeah, covers it. Then. Right. Okay. There you go. So so they they have to get the Okay, so, so the government creates roadblocks and, oh, the government has to remove the roadblock before the private industry, entity can, can go ahead and, and do what's best for the nation, which exactly. is to provide energy. Yes. Okay. And, and so, yeah, uh, and then that, that whole green thing. I, I just don't know where to begin. I mean, it's just all convoluted. So, Leon, help me out here. Well, so, no. I think we're just about at the end of the show oh, now. We so we're almost out of time. So I think, uh, you know, Biden had to kill that. I got to kill this conversation <laughs> so we can Damn. kill it. Damn. Executive you order. Your bureaucrats, <laughs> your bureaucrats are very good at killing things off. I see. <laughs> Don't worry. I guarantee you another job on the next show of Knuckleheads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you a better answer than Saki. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So anyways, well, uh, come up and prove the jobs that you've given in the past, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Please join us all for the next uh, episode of Knuckleheads of Liberty. And until then, we'll see you at the next one. Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts, each Monday, 5.30 p.m. on Channel 17. This show also available on YouTube, Facebook, and other social media platforms and podcasts. Thank you for listening to the Libertarian Counterpoint. <laughs>